Johnny Deller. Art Engels, International Life and Casualty. How you doing, Art? Hey, listen, Johnny, are you free to take something off for us? Arthur, my boy, as long as a nice, big, wealthy company like yours just can't wait to pay my expense account. Now, Johnny... Plus a sizable fee for my superlative services. Okay, what's it all about? Murder? Fraud? Arson? No. Okay, then what? I don't know. Oh, you want me, but you don't know what for. That's right, yeah. Well, that's a switch. Actually, Johnny, it's one of our very important clients wants you. Art, that's not a switch. He has demanded that you and only you be sent over to see him. But he hasn't told you why. That's right. Uh Uh-oh. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, the last time I took on one of those I-don't-know-why matters, I got slugged, shot at, and thrown off a bridge. Well, uh, Johnny... But okay, Art, I'll run on over and see you. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the International Life and Casualty Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the phony phone matter. I don't really go for these vague assignments, but international has always paid off pretty well. So expense account item one, a dollar and a quarter for a taxi over to the office of Art Engels. He was waiting outside the building for me in his car. We took off and headed back across town again. Where to, Art? Mr. Wendell's office is in the Clay Building. Wendell? J. Ransom Wendell, the important client I told you about, who wants to see you right away. But who hasn't told you why he wants to see me? He hasn't told me. How important, Art? Well, he owns and runs the Crown Lithograph Operation. Never heard of it. When he inherited that plant, it must have been, oh, 40 years ago. It was just a small outfit. Not worth more than four or five hundred thousand. Oh, you call that small? And now it's worth millions. Then Wendell is loaded. He certainly is, Johnny. And that means he carries a lot of insurance. One of our biggest accounts. Life insurance on himself. How much? Half a million. Wow. Insurance on his wife for the same figure. Policies on his home, his cars, plant, personnel. Well, I make no bones about it. Even if his calling for you is only to satisfy some sort of a whim, we can't afford to turn him down. Some sort of a whim? Yeah. You mean it could be? Yeah. Johnny, he's so used to having his own way. You know, because of all his money. Oh, wait now. Hold everything. Yeah. J.R. Wendell. Alimony Wendell? That is our boy. Married five, six, seven times? At one. And always to some delectable dish he picked out of the chorus line of a nightclub on some Broadway show? That's the one, Johnny. Marries him, finds out all they want is his money, pays him off, then goes ahead and does the same thing all over again. Oh, brother. But according to the newspaper stories a couple of years ago, he swore he was through with those gold diggers, that he'd never again pay off another one of them. Mm Mm-hmm. So what happened? What happens? Nine, ten months ago, he puts a ring on that dancer, LaVon Laverne. Yikes. Whereupon she promptly puts a ring in his nose. And starts making the usual debt in his bank account. Oh, now you don't think his wanting to see me has anything to do with his trouble with this LaFon Laverne? Oh, now, Art, I, I will soon of... find out, Johnny, because this is his office building. Wendell's office was huge. The walls were paneled in rich mahogany hung with fine oil paintings. Wall to wall carpeting so thick you sank into it almost up to your ankles. Fine antique furniture, including his tremendous desk. And the man himself really fooled me. He must have been, oh, about 60. But instead of a snide, leering old wolf, he was tall, straight as a ramrod, with clear, frank blue eyes. Yeah, the smart, alert kind of man you'd expect to head up a multi-million dollar operation. The kind you wouldn't expect to have fallen for a whole line of cheap chorus girls. But then, of course, you never can tell. Yes, Mr. Engels, Mr. Dollar, it's my wife, LaVon, that I'm concerned about, but... Since it has nothing whatsoever to do with her insurance at the moment. Well, now, Mr. Wendell... Engels, I'm much obliged to you for bringing Dollar to me. If I need you further, I'll let you know. Well, if I can be of any help in this No, no, no. Dollar and I can handle this alone, so you just run along. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Whatever you say. I'll be in touch. Yes, yeah, so all I are. All right, Johnny. Uh, you let me know. Just goodbye. All right, Dollar. Well, now look. If if there's no insurance involved. Oh, there isn't. I hope there won't be. I'm quite sure there won't be. Nonetheless. You say this concerns your wife? Yes. Yes, it does. Well, far be it from me, Mr. Wendell, but uh, I had a notion you were through with marrying all these uh, pretty young girls. I made some bad mistakes, Dollar. Seven of them, to be exact. Cost me a lot of money, a lot of heartache. Took a lot out of me. Well, let's face it. I pretty much made an old fool of myself. Instead of paying off those girls, those leeches, to get free of them, I should have... I at least profited by the mistakes I made. What do you mean, sir? I mean, Levon. Young, beautiful. Maybe she is no mental giant, but she's made me a good, a loving, a devoted wife. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Wendell. But now, what's the problem? Fear. Fear? Yes, Levon's. But fear of what, sir? Fear, Mr. Dollar, of being murdered. <laughs> And now, the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, wait, Mr. Wendell. Your wife, Levon, she's been threatened with murder. Threatened? No. I'm afraid I don't understand. But, Dollar, she's fearful that someone is going to kill her. It's been going on for several weeks now. Why? I don't know. All I know is that she's become terribly upset over this idea, this this fear. I've called on you to see if you can determine for me if there are grounds for all this apprehension. What if she hasn't received any direct threats? She hasn't, at least none that I know of. Well, she says that she hasn't. Well, no, 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 no. Something has got into her, gotten her into this unfortunate state of mind. I, I don't know what it is. But I hope you can find out for me. Hey, you, you sure you shouldn't have called in a psychiatrist? Have one of those stupid, money-grubbing head shrinkers ask her a lot of silly questions? Oh, no, no, wait. Some of them are pretty good. Can do a lot of good in a situation no, like no, this. No, no, Dollar. Because I, I know, Lamont. I know what her reaction would be. She's nervous and upset enough about these fears as it is. But you, posing as an old friend, as our guest there at the lodge. Your lodge, Mr. Wendell? Yes, over on the Peekabuck River above Farmington. It's a little place we keep as a sort of retreat, a place to get away from it all. I see. When I left the house here in town a few minutes ago, I told Levon we'd meet her there for lunch and start the weekend a little early. We, oui, huh? I told her you're an old friend. Come east for a bit of a vacation. Oh, uh, from where? Los Angeles, Hollywood. Uh. You are familiar with the West Coast, I hope. Oh, uh, enough to talk about it and tell it. Good. Well, then why don't we leave right away? Um, Mr. Wendell... We'll stop at your apartment so you can pick up some clothes, then we'll head on up to the lodge. Uh, Excuse me. But now, look here, yes, sir, I'm... Mr. Wendell? Miss Barker, have my car brought around, please. Yes, sir. I'll be gone until Monday. Have a pleasant weekend, Mr. Wendell. Thank you. Well... <laughs> well, I still don't quite understand what you expect me to do up there at your lodge. Dollar, I have known about you for years. I have great respect for your talents. Not only as a crime investigator, but because of your ability to deal with people... Get very close to them. Ah. People like your charming and beautiful wife, Mr. Wendell? Oh, no. I'm very serious, Dollar. You have a knack of inspiring confidence, of getting things out of people that... Well, you see, I follow the reports of your cases on the radio very closely. Yeah, well... I'm uh... convinced that you can be of more help than any psychiatrist could possibly. And uh, also, and let's be frank about this. Yes? That is, if your wife's fears are justified... Well, you also think I might be handy to have around as a bodyguard, right? Yes, Dollar, that's right. We drove over to my place and I packed a couple of bags. I also picked up the old faithful thirty-eight caliber limit squeezer. We drove east on Route 4 to Farmington and then north along the western side of the Peekabuck River and finally east again on a private road. Meantime, as we drove along, I questioned Mr. Wendell further. No, Dollar, I can think of no one who might want to harm her, of whom she ought to be worried or afraid. Well, there must be some basis for this fear of hers. Of course, before I met Levon and married her, when she was dancing in nightclubs, and I'm afraid not always the better one. Well, a lot of those joints are run by racketeers. Yes. 
Contacts in those days were not always with the best of people. Ah, something to work on, isn't it? Oh, but now here we are. You like my little place? Oh, you call this little? We like it because it doesn't require any servants, and we can... Now, what's the matter? Well, nothing. Only it's well afternoon, and I don't see Levine's car anywhere. Well, maybe she's been here and left to do some shopping or something. Come along, Dollar. Let's go in and see. Well, I suppose ten rooms is rather small to a man like Mr. Wendell. But I didn't have much chance to look around because of his concern over his wife. He went through the motions of pouring a couple of drinks. I, I just don't understand this, Dollar. It, it's almost one o'clock. She's always on time. Will you excuse me? I, I'm going to see if something's held her up at home. Oh, LaVon. Uh, I'm just silly, I suppose, but I'm here at the lodge with Mr. Dollar, and I was beginning to get worried about you, why you weren't here when we... visitor. Anybody I know? Vonnie, you sound worried about something. What is it, dear? Vonnie? Vonnie? Hello? 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 What's wrong, Mr. Vonnie, that sound I heard, what was it? Hello? Hello? Vonnie, Vonnie, what is it? What? What? All right, now, Mr. Wendell, what happened? Well, I don't know, Mr. Dollar. She gave a strange kind of yeah. a... Yeah. A kind of a, a gas. Yeah. I believe she dropped the telephone. There was a thump, a heavy thump. Okay. Operate. Operator, get me police headquarters in Hartford. Make it a homicide. <laughs> Continue with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, back to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the phony phone matter. By the time we get back to Wendell's home in Hartford, the police were there, Lieutenant Billy Walker in charge. The body of LaVon Wendell lay sprawled on the floor next to a sofa. The telephone had fallen to the floor beside her. One of Walker's men was dusting it for prints. Another, obviously the medic, had removed a rather gruesome-looking knife from the middle of her back. Wendell had slumped into a chair, and he sat there staring as though he couldn't quite believe it. His face was white, and he kept clenching and unclenching his hands with such force I was sure his palms were bleeding. The only sound he made was an occasional half-smothered sob. Must have killed her instantly, Dollar. Doc here says the knife went clear through into her heart. Yeah. Think you can trace that knife, Lieutenant? Oh, I don't have to came from that collection up there over the fireplace. Johnny, that could indicate it was done by somebody she knew that she let in here. You mean somebody who came unprepared to kill her? Right. Oh, the back door was left ajar, by the way. Any servants in this place? <laughs> We're way ahead of you. What? Well, to begin with, they're an old, old couple. Neither one of them could have had the strength to do this. Oh, are they? They were given the weekend off. How do you know that? One of the boys who knows them saw them at the station early this morning. Oh. Said they were heading down to New York to see some relatives. Yes, yes, we... We let them go, Lieutenant, because we plan to be up in the country for the weekend. Okay, Mr. Wendell. If only we hadn't. If only there'd been someone here when... When he... When whoever did this... Easy now, sir. A visitor, she said. She told me over the phone it yeah. was a visitor. Yeah, I, If only uh, she'd I been able to that. tell me who it was before... Dollar, you've got to find him. You've got to find this killer. Don't worry, Mr. Wendell. We'll do everything Spare we can. Spare no expense. I'll do anything. I'll give you anything you want, but you must find him. Yeah, your attorney, Mr. Wendell. Dollar, I don't care what it costs or what you have to do. My attorney? He'll have to be notified of this immediately. Who is he? Oh, uh, Spidel. Harold old Spidel. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it as soon as I can pull myself together. Now, look, you can't be of any help at the moment, so why don't you just sit down and uh, better still pour yourself a drink? A drink? Yeah, do you good. Go ahead. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Perhaps that's... Um, Lieutenant. Oh, wait a second, Johnny. You sure of that, Mac? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Sure of what? Johnny, the only prints on that phone are hers. You'd think in a household like this, unless somebody wiped them off just in case. Of course, Lieutenant. Look, I'll see you later. What? I borrowed Mr. Wendell's car without bothering to ask him for it. 
I drove to the office of lawyer Spardell, all on a big fat hunch. And I thought he might be able to help me with a better understanding of the whole Wendell setup. You know something? I don't think he'll ever know how much he did help me. Well, as long as you were there with him at the lodge and heard the phone conversation with her. Why, uh, yes. Of course, it's too bad, LeVon, going like this, but Dollar, I can't say I'm at all surprised. And by the way of being cold-blooded about it, well, it saves Wendell the trouble and expense of another divorce, more alimony. I, uh, yeah. Dollar, he is one of the most clever, the most ruthless businessmen I've ever known. Yet these girls, one after another, have been able to take him for so much. And you don't think this one would have lasted? Huh? I'm certain of it. But I thought he and Levon were getting along pretty well. Oh, I suppose he may have thought so. I don't see why, though. Oh, what do you mean? Some of the others were pretty expensive while he was married to them. They all were afterward, but none of them compared with Levon. Did you ever see one of her lavish nightclub parties? Uh, no. Why, the other night, last Tuesday, I just happened to be in the Purple Cat over in... Now, mind you, I'm not a nightclub habitual. Yeah, Mr. Spadell, hmm? I yes? think I'd better be going. Oh, but I thought perhaps I could be of help to you. Oh, you've been plenty of help. After all, I know the names of many of the gangsters with whom this girl was formerly associated. Oh, I'm sure you do. Any one of whom might be a possible suspect. More so than Mr. Wendell himself. Wendell himself? Think that over. But you were with him there at the lodge. You heard him talking to her on the phone when it happened. That's so? Of course. You yourself are his perfect alibi. Am I? Yeah. That telephone conversation. So item two on the expense account is ten cents for a phone call to my favorite gal friend, Betty Lewis. As I expected, she was willing to go along with a little stunt I had in mind that might blow this whole murder case wide open. By the time I got back to Wendell's home, the police and his wife's body were gone. And he calmed down all right. There were several empty glasses at his elbow. You were right, Dollar. I've pulled myself together enough to realize that what's happened is, has happened. Oh, I forgot to call my attorney, as you suggested. I'll do it right away. No, no, no. Uh, wait, I, I, I want to talk to you. Yes? Besides, uh, I'm expecting a call myself on that phone. Oh, you, you made some progress? Yeah, um, quite a bit, I think. Well, good. Uh... I understand that as a businessman, you're pretty ruthless. Doesn't sound nervous, upset to me. What? And what you know, I... that phone conversation there at your lodge was pretty smart. Will you please start making sense, oh, Dollar? I, I was pretty dumb. I should have realized you couldn't have dialed this number from up here. Uh, uh, just a minute. Sorry, I want to get this call. Dollar! Hello? Hi, hon, this is Betty. Yeah, this is Johnny Dollar. Oh, then it is for you. Now, do I got to hang up and leave you with an empty line the way you said I should? Yes. Oh, gee. Yes. Okay. Bye, sweet. Yes, I'm alone here. What? I'll give you 500 if your info is accurate. What is it, Mr. Dollar? No, no, 500 is the limit. Unless you're willing to appear and testify in court. Okay, then it's 1,000. Come on over here and I'll give it to you. If you can give me enough facts right now to prove you were here. What goes on there, Dollar? Oh, you actually saw him, huh? Uh, through which window? Yeah? Side of the room? Yeah, I can see it from here. Who are you talking and to? And you actually saw him take the knife from his collection over the... Yeah? Yeah. Uh, then he what? The back door? Yeah, I got it. His own car, huh? Well, sure, it was office in time to meet me there. Hang up that phone, Dollar. Uh, excuse me, I've... Hang uh... it up. Yeah, sure. So somebody saw me. Somebody saw me, killer. But when that informer comes here to collect the money you promised... Mr. Him, Wendell... Dollar, he's going to get exactly what you're going to get. A bullet in the head. You see this gun? Oh, yeah. Now, Mr. Wendell, my name isn't Matt Dillon. What? But if you think you can... I'll draw me. Wow. Well, I hope Wendell never finds out that my phone conversation with a mythical informer was just as phony as his. His uh, talk with his wife after he'd killed her had left her there at the telephone at his home had set me up for an alibi at the lodge. But then what's the difference where he's going? 
Expense account total? A dollar thirty-five. Oh, let's talk about the fee on this one. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, one of my ever-loving gals comes into the case. And believe me, things get complicated. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Marvin Miller, Dick Crenna, and Lou Merrill. 